Hi hey now, uh, sorry I'm a bit early, it's Friday and things to do this afternoon so uh, we've got this lovely acrylic palette knife uh, painted to do, I uh, know I've not found my uh, palette knives. Um, I'm going to break it up into sections, uh, sorry about this, could have had this ready. I've just been out and got back from Wigan uh, uh, and the traffic's absolutely terrible as you know everywhere you go so um, it's been an hour man. so we've just rushed in and that's why I'm not I'm not actually ready anyway I've got a pallet knife that's the main thing so I um, we can't find my best one anyway uh, yeah we've got to break it up into Sections, so it's like the sky area, background sea, uh, the rocks, and then the foreground sea. Quite a lot of white in this. Uh, the colours are not that, uh, <coughs> not that colourful, if you know what I mean. This, I, this actual way over here is uh, a little bit warmer. Uh, as it, it is on the photograph, but when I printed it off, it's a bit darker than it should be so I might add a little bit of yellow to the green to put that crashing wave in because it's nearer to you the sky if you look at it I've got uh, bird sienna or lizarine in it and it's uh, that's lovely pastel colours uh, so we can paint that as well and we might be doing a little bit of splattering with some white to give us that uh, crashing wave yeah uh, we might have to cover up some of the um, some of the rocks to stop it um, uh, splashing into rocks, although it might not matter. So we've got lots and lots of uh, tones to do, and uh, with a palette knife, you've got to get a nice effect. Okay, try and use the knife all the way through, if possible. Uh, Colour wise, like I said, we're going to use verdant green, ultramarine, alizarine, but sienna, uh, cerulean blue as well, and. Um, only a touch of yellow, not a lot, because we're just warming up. I'm just going to warm up that uh, that green, actually. I've then got the water out, so I need to put water just to draw the picture for the brush. Yeah, so I've got cabin yellow out, a bit of sienna. I'm probably going to use a lot of white in this one. Uh, put the sienna out, and then a misery. Uh, just a small brush to draw with. You can use a brush later on if you want. Put the dark tones in, but uh, keep it simple first. Put sienna and a lizarine and um, crimson. Nice kind of uh, cool red. Uh, a cerulean blue is this one, yeah. I'm down to my last drag, so I'll put that out. And we've got uh, ultramarine blue. Can't get the top off. Yeah, put it around the edges and just use the centre of your palette as the mixing area. Yeah, to give yourself plenty of space. Otherwise, you're going to uh, you're going out of space. You don't want that. A bit of green. You get it out. Like that. And uh, you always put it back if you've got tubs, not if you've got tubes. And then cut it up to turn in white. Okay, that's a nice colour as well. So we mix on the palette usually. Uh, draw using a bit of blue and a bit of red mixed together. Kind of give us a purple tone. Lots of water. Alright, so our horizon line we can... Uh, put it about a third of the way in it. No, it's not a third. It's about, it's just, it's more, just more than a quarter. So if that's the halfway point, uh, you just want to put it about here. Uh, so we'll draw a line like that. Try to do it. Uh, it's still gesso paper, but not gesso paper, it's still normal paper. Uh, so we just have this straight line all across the horizon. Okay, so that's a, uh, one section done, and then we just draw shapes. We've got a sky above it, we've got the sea, 
and then you've got this the rocks which I'm just going to go up from this side uh, and do the shape of the rock like this it comes across up here and over, over there and we could draw this bit of a rock that hits the water and we've got one in front of it something like that where you get the, the shape of the wave crashing uh, so this rock you've got a lovely shadow there uh, we need to put that in we use different colours for the rocks as well so you've got this curl of this wave which is the green one uh, which goes all the way off the picture like that so that's nice and green and then we've got the as it crashes around here so I just want to draw this kind of crash of the wave and then you've got this lovely water uh, and the blue shapes green shape and then a lot of there's a bit of a rock there as well and a lot of light in your foreground so that's about it okay nice and simple that's all we need to do we don't need no time today <laughs> no we're not anyway you get the um the palette knife we've got a nice round one today like i said i can't find me other one uh i'm going to mix a little bit of sienna just keep a uh, cloth handy to uh wipe your palette knife on a little bit of sienna a little bit of blue as well uh, some white so you've got sienna and white like that. and then you've got your blue and uh, then you've got your alizarine as well which is going to be in certain parts so just add a bit of alizarine you see and then we can actually just put it in like this um, with the white uh, let it kind of mix together as you're doing this comb like that uh, a bit of sienna warm it up this will give you highlights you can see so you get the highlights and the clouds uh, like that I'm just going to work my way through it actually uh, and down towards this beautiful cerulean blue uh, that I haven't got out but I'm going to get a little bit out mixed with my white uh, so you get this kind of lovely put a bit of water in that um, lovely kind of light blue tone against that sky yeah uh, so I can go over this as well to lighten it uh, keep that lovely cloud area all right um, a little bit of blue just coming out to the horizon uh, and then we can add purple so we want some purple tones there's quite a lot of different colors in the sky uh, work your way up from the horizon line like that yeah, if you can uh, using the opposite side of your, your palette knife like that yeah. uh, if you're quick enough it will go into the clouds you see this lovely shape um, just add a bit of purple and some of that blue together uh, just want a bit more actually so it gives a purple sky but not too dark because it's got uh, lovely light in it you can see like that uh, and again we can add that purple in the sky like that and go to the horizon you can go a little bit darker over here if you want uh, try and get rid of the white purple you can use bits of it as the sky <laughs> but uh, not all of it and you've got some kind of you know uh, darker areas just where the clouds are forming yeah you try and uh, just emulate the shapes that you're looking at uh, it's like here and once you colour them in uh, you know you've got this nice dark tone you put it on take it off same thing again keep mixing the white with it I'm mixing as I go along uh, just to keep the uh, colours clean as well uh, try not to make them mucky just mix a few colours with white 
come across here. Uh, uh, yeah, all the way along the sky. Again, pick up the uh, bird sienna as well, uh, just to get in. The sienna at the top, uh, which is inside the clouds. We've got the alizarine, so it's okay. Uh, this is coming over to blue again. Blue and a bit of purple, a bit of red. So give it purple tone. That's lovely kind of bluish tone. Quite light. Uh, all the way across the sky. Uh, then we we'll go darker. If we get that again, as we get down to the horizon. Um, if you get if you give your palette a spray as well because it's catching it's getting quite dry it's uh, it's drying up quite quick today so uh, let's just try and look at some of the clouds behind these white uh, you know the purple ones uh, and create them it's as simple as it's like anything with watercolors or any less you do it to the sky, the better it's going to look for you. So you don't want to be spending ages. Ages and ages doing uh, shapes and whatever in the skies. Simple shapes. From that horizon line. Uh, keep it slightly darker on the horizon. Uh, Squint as you do it. Yeah, take your glasses off. You got them. No, you might not need your glasses. You just squint. You get these really light areas as well. These bluish kind of tones, which are clouds in the distance. Yeah, just like that. I've left some white paper, but it's quite nice. Just block that corner in. Don't have anything in corners. Uh, just keep them simple shapes. It leads your eye, your eye to the corner. Uh, you don't want that. Start leading your eye out of the picture. Okay. Uh, beautiful pastel colours. So we can always come back to that later. Yeah. We don't have to. Uh, leave it as it is, we'll let it dry, go back into it later, get that lovely kind of cloud formation. Then. Just a bit of cloud formation. Oops, picked up some of the rain. Just be careful. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Uh, we'll leave that sky for now um, and then I'm coming down from there to the rocks actually but I've got a big area of crashing waves so I'll just mark off with my brush again where we've got this uh, area of like a crashing wave that's coming over can't do that yet I need to go over the sea with it and this comes all the way from kind of here we've got a, a shape and then uh, we've got this lovely curve and then it kind of rolls over here uh, so it's down to the this bit so if I look at my green uh, get some tissue ready so you can keep your paper clean as well uh, keep your palette clean I mean before it dries because it's harder to remove when it dries just keep a, an area, like I said, in the middle. <coughs> right. That you can mix your paint on without you getting mucky. Okay. And then we'll start with our uh, lovely turquoise sea in the background. We've got green and we've got uh, blue, ultramarine blue. That gives you a lovely kind of turquoises. Okay. So we can come down from the horizon line now and do that lovely shape. If you drag it this way as well, 
you can create these areas where you've got uh, waves in the distance. You can use the paper if you like, uh, doesn't matter. Keep your palette knife clean, keep that lovely straight line. <coughs> We've got all the way across, up to the up to the sky, and then down like that. Okay, and so that's this distant tree, this tree. Oh, of course, talking about distant wave <laughs> tree on the brain. Keep mixing the same tone. Try not to run out. If you run out, yeah, you have to try and mix the same. Uh, value uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult but uh, I've got this lovely turquoise and when we look at this this wave we've got this lovely car crashing here you know so we can go over this with um, with white pigment and same here so we can go over that with white pigment like that. so we've got this really strong turquoise colour which is very nice same here when we go in into this uh, area. <laughs> this where the, the kind of waves crash in, giving that shape. Okay, you put colour on and scratch it off again and get lighter marks. See, uh, but uh, you want this sea to be quite dark against the horizon so that sends the sky back as well um, nice flat shapes okay <laughs> so it's just turquoise that's all all the way across and then we get this it starts going a little bit blue so we use a bit more ultramarine with the green yeah and we get this kind of bluish tone Gives you this. Uh, we're going to use some splattering over there later. Scratch into it. We've got some blue here as well underneath, and we can add these kind of shapes. Scratch it. Yeah. Just think about the the light, and we can use some, like I said, white pigment later. We'll get the just get the right straight line first possible straight across okay uh, so these waves go in that direction I'm going to use some alizarine red sienna and blue for this next bit now these are very dark rocks okay but I need to like make it look like they are rocks and not just uh, big dark shapes well, they are dark shares, but we want them to be light in places and darker in others. Okay, so we can have a, a, bit, of, a bit of sienna to give us the warmth of your rock, like this. Uh, yeah. And then add, add your darker tones. Uh, it is white in places because of the water, but we we'll go down to the sea and it goes a uh, different tonal value. Like this. So this is this lovely texture. So if you drag your brush, you get these really strong uh, areas of dark, uh, like this. Um, we've got a nice dirt there, which is not easy to paint when you've got a straight palette knife. <coughs> and then this dark on top of the rocks. Okay. Use more, you can use red, uh, red and green as well. Very, very strong colours. And then up here, coming in, bit of sienna with it. Try and mix colours with it. Uh, you can leave some white. Like that. So the rocks are quite dark because <laughs> uh, the waves are going to make it. Uh, Stands out. So as we get to the top of this crashing wave, here, it uh, it goes a little bit. You get this really nice curve actually. You see, 
is all the way. I know we've got some kind of white um, shape within that rock, but I want to curve this, make the shape dark, and then um, we've got this really strong dark area. Thick you put it on. Uh, the more opaque it is, like this. you could do this as well. Get that lovely blue shining through. Like that. This is the beauty of the palette knife. So you can create lovely areas of uh, colours within the rocks. Like this one, quite dark, and as it comes down to the base of the rock, it goes. Uh, quite uh, dark again, uh, you've got this lovely dark here as it goes into the sea and around here as well, so we'll just put that in. Okay, got that. Uh, there's another one over there as well. Okay, so we'll keep that lovely, I keep saying lovely but uh, to get some lighter blue, lighter green here. So again, keep your palette clean, just have a bit of water in the middle, wipe off the excess. Don't get rid of anything you might need later. Just make a big area to mix the palette. Keep standing by, have a drink of water in a minute. If you look at the waves, the water, they're not actually pure white, the kind of cerulean, yeah, um, so you've got the cerulean blue, which is coming up from uh, the kind of rock area like this, uh, uh, and we've got some ultramarine in as well, so, okay, so we want to create this shadow in the web as it comes around like that. and just looking at where it changes tone slightly <coughs> uh, around here for instance so I'll put it on and then just scratch it off because uh, this one is a bit kind of bluer you can do that see you just take it over to the side of your palette knife take it over uh, have a look for any more blue, it's kind of darker tone, just as it hits the rock, and then it goes up like that, splashing, uh, try to keep that shape, uh, same here, we'll have that, that uh, bit of crashing wave, and uh, then here, just in that direction, and then down there, as it hits that rock. If you want to uh, soften areas, just wet the wet your palette knife and just drag uh, a kind of white water uh, water over it to just keep some shapes. Okay. Uh, see if I use pure white now, I can put these uh, over there. Watery, I love the waves in the distance, sorry, like that, on the water. Um, and then we've got a bluey, let's see, uh, uh, civilian blue and white uh, all around this area. So you can see it's slightly darker in between, but then you're getting these lovely uh, blue shapes. You know what I mean? Uh, blue sea. Um, it's, this comes down kind of all the way to this rock here. Uh, Alright, drag it across. Just keep using different colours. Uh, uh, you could create a really 
really simple shape. There is some burnt sienna as well in the wave area because it will be warmer in places. So just where it's crashing there, put a bit of sienna in, give that warm. I need to put this in before I go any darker. Now I'll go any, use uh, my space, I should say. My palette. So I've got clean palette knife, a bit of yellow, okay, and some green. Mix it together, okay. So I want a nice kind of warm yellowy green, which is that kind of colour, but then it goes turquoise, so it goes blue. It's definitely blue. So I've got the same kind of thing going on. Top of the wave like that. Adding more blue. Like uh, as you get up here, you get the the uh, light just on top of that wave coming down. So this is the light through the wave. You can see through. Uh, and it's quite a bit darker, a bit greener. Turquoise there. Nice and thin. Nice and thin. You can leave gaps just to create some foam. Yeah. And then we're going blue again as we get down to where it meets. Here. So we're just about here. We're going a bit blue again, blue. Uh, put some yellow and white. We get this uh, a bit of yellow and white, and that will give you some. Kind of transparency in that wave as well. Like that. Okay, stand back. Nice big shape. Okay, and then we move. You move on to next door. <laughs> Not next door, literally. And then we got this lovely kind of blue crash of a wave that comes up here. Like that. Uh, and this goes actually goes into. Um, top this wave so a bit of blue like that mix it together uh, so it kind of just goes over this wave here uh -huh. and then it's going lighter so <laughs> just drag it over it's actually Bit greenish as well, yeah. Uh, add some blue, white, uh -huh. so it's kind of crashing. Uh, and we've got a lovely light over here, and we've got a blue over here, which is uh, again quite light, lots of white with it. And it's just at the bottom, so it's like here. Just a bit more blue to that. So you've got this, you can see, this lovely kind of blue as it hits uh, the water here. Same thing out there, yeah. And then we've got some blue there as well. Uh, I'm going in the opposite direction because at the top near the rock, 
need to go over the rock with with some blue and say because it's covering and then I got the white bits in between <laughs> foreground back to cerulean but a lot of white <laughs> back to cerulean and Just love the camera. <laughs> it's got blue areas, it's got light blue areas and dark areas. Uh, like that. Lots of white. We need more white. Stand back, look through the camera. Yeah. Quite like that because I'm going to splatter that without hitting anything. Uh, again, the bluish white tones at the top. Oh, it kind of just changes tone. Uh, so you just got this kind of covers that bit of the sea. As it curls over, okay, and we get some more uh, pure whites in there after uh, the pure whites are going to be lovely. It's kind of splattering big marks there, <coughs> like that. Uh, you're going to drag them through as well. You can see how you're going to splatter these. Use the palette knife. And it comes up here to give that a really strong highlights on the way, scratch into it like that. And then this comes around here. So just painting the shapes. See it? Okay. Got the same on the top of the wave, so I can go. Crash in. Go like that. And then this one. Just out to see some of the um, the colours underneath the whites, so you don't want to just cover them up. You want to just see them, yeah. Um, so it's like so you get these shapes uh, on the rock as well. Water ah, gives that little shadow as well, just above anything that's warmer underneath. 
a wet lot. Okay. Like uh, nothing over here really, this is shadow. back <coughs> I go green again but it's uh, green and blue turquoise color so it's especially when we get to the bottom here you've got these strong areas a gap where you get the white and as you're coming forward less and less like and you get in there a nice dark area here and about here This is kind of shadows within the waves. Right. Stand back. Put another drink. Tony Water. Yeah, it's quite nice. And again, I'm going to use some, you can use a bit of sienna with your white uh, just to give us some colours that are not there just warm it up a bit there's a lot of white there actually Yeah. Uh -huh. And again, we've got some areas that are just a little bit darker in the background. Drag over <coughs> so it's the first foaming water. Yeah. Dragging it over this little bit of light area where the water is. Cast the shadow as well. Sounds it. Bags of town. Okay. Put some seagulls in if you like. <laughs> White areas. This is where the water meets the land. Again, that lovely. Should be getting some textures now, which will help with the with the lights catching on the texture of your paper. Uh, get this flowing motion. <coughs> Stand back. That's looking okay, actually. I'm not. I'm a bit unsure what to do here. I don't. I know there's a big rock sticking out there. Um, well, I'll just plonk it in. Technical term. Um, somewhere like this. Because there's something in the foreground that. That brings it forward. It's a little bit darker. I got another one here, which is probably attached to the same rock. Uh, uh -huh. Let's drop the picture. Uh, drop 
big fussy. Stand back. So I need some more white. Now we get to the stage where it's quite a bit of white actually. Quite a bit of white. And I could use a little bit of dark. So I'm going to use some green, red mixed together. Add some blue if you want. Very strong coloured tones. I'm just going to add these to the rock shapes to give us a bit more contrast. Because the darker the rocks are, the, uh, the lighter the waves look, okay? So the tops of these are quite dark. I don't want to cover everything up because I like some of this this blue. Uh, that's quite nice that streak along the top of that wave, so I'm gonna leave that. I'll get some nice darks down here <coughs> to bring out the uh, top of this wave, actually. Make it lighter against the background. Okay, so that's that shadow. We've got a lovely shadow here coming down the rock. And then at the end, you've got another one. Bristle brush. Right. Do a bit of spattering. Get your finger on it. You need water. Dip the paint. Else it won't work. So here we go. Like that. Don't go everywhere. <laughs> Power of a crashing wave uh, along here. reason why you can't use the brush as well I know I keep saying try and use your palette knife because you get these nice effects you can't get it with the brush but you can you can block in areas with the brush uh, easily much easier than you can with the palette knife so uh, you know we want to do that that's fine but, uh, there and there's one in the middle yeah it's not strong you want to more of a, a bristle on it Yeah. 
And then you get the water kind of pulling off the rock. Oh, no, go back to the water. So here it's quite. Try and see the shapes. <laughs> and set and then at the top, some of them have that lovely light. <laughs> so the Just have a bit, a bit more sienna instead of this four guy to uh, bob things up a bit. Give a bit of depth, makes it look like the sun under there as well, uh, as well as this lovely highlight of the water. Forget your seagulls. Look great over at mantelpiece. This it's not a Christmas one. We're doing some snow scenes in case you're wondering. It's the thickness of the paint now. You look at your picture and it's it's around here. So I can see my paper underneath. That's where I want to be your white. Like so from a distance it just stands out, yeah. Um, I have a toothbrush somewhere. Just wonder if this will work better for me splatters. You get your toothbrush. Gives you very fine splatters, can you see? Like that. On that edge. Quite nice, actually. You don't want it too wet, but then uh, you want it to be light enough to stand out from that wave. Uh, <coughs> where you can see the wave too, I just noticed it's slightly darker. So I want more blue. As soon as you look here, you've got this lovely dark area, which is kind of underneath the shadow of the wave. Yeah? Uh, so you can see this. Uh, lovely dark, this one there as well. A lot darker. 
just as it curls around the corner. Underneath the web. And we've got some dice here. Let's see where it's crashing. That's about it. Three seagulls, if you like. Stand back. <laughs> Quite like this sky. I'll use a little bit of white. Give me the, the light on the front of the clouds. Just uh -huh. here and there. Uh -huh. Bit of a seagull shape, big seagull that. the highlights, thin areas where the water's crashing in the distance. I can drag it over, over this blue. top of this rock. Make it still make it. And that's it. Unless we put a fat seagull in, do we? Three. Oh, in the distant, except for that one. Right, I think I won't leave it. I'm going to leave the foreground. That's paper and a bit of uh, white paint. You could do some kind of glazing.
Je vais voir un petit petit. C'est le kind of, well, I think it's spoil it. It's to blend the tones in the sky. You can glaze over like that. Yeah. But, uh, your palette knife always does a kind of good job. A little bit darker in places. Ah. Use a bit of white, a bit of sienna up. Nice glaze. Lovely. Yeah. She's a bit of sea out. Let it run. And relax. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, Linda. <laughs> it's only you today. Uh, I know it's Friday and all that, but um, yeah, it's nearly just gone 10 to, so I started at 5 to, so not so bad. And I'm going to see you next year. I might be changing the times in a bit, but. Because uh, it's getting a bit difficult to be, do the one o'clock one, but uh, I'll have to have a look at it next week, okay? And put it online. So, thanks for watching. Have a go, it's very enjoyable. And uh, I'll take the tape off before I go. Nice picture, rugged sea, can't beat it. Tap off. Uh, they have a nice uh, border. Okay. You always better go in over the tape if possible so you can get that edge. Thanks, guy. Oh, thanks, Linda. I'll see, <laughs> I'll see you uh, next week. Have a good weekend. Bye for now.